Today, I'm going to show you how to configure Azure Cognitive Search to index documents stored in SharePoint. And at the end, I'll show you how to chat with a um, corporate chat GPT-like bot. Um, my name is Denis Malatsov. Uh, my expertise is everything SharePoint, Microsoft 365. And in the last several years, I've been closely working with uh, um, the Power Platform. Um, we'll work with a fictitious uh, company called uh, Tailspin. Imagine you have a SharePoint uh, site with a bunch of uh, corporate uh, procedures, uh, policies, and you've seen lots of demos with uh, ChatGPT, and you've been wondering how do you chat with it and ask questions about your fictitious tailspin corporation. Because uh, if you use the uh, like public ChatGPT, it doesn't know almost anything about your company unless it's uh, well uh, publicized and available on the in internet. There are some alternative solutions, but today we're going to use cognitive search. Don't confuse it with cognitive services, and we'll use Azure Open AI to create a bot and a website. So this is how your corporate chatbot site will look like by default although you will be able to modify it if you want. You can change the branding, logo, and really you, you have the source code. It's um, publicly available, not built by me, of course, but it's on GitHub. Uh, to start, uh, let's assume you have a bunch of policies, procedures, maybe some human resource documentation like onboarding, related documents, trivia about the company, maybe um, benefits, um, and maybe um, policies on like behavior and um, like where the closest, uh, you know, fire escape route is and so on. So suppose you get this collection. Uh, in this case, it's about give or take uh, 60, 70 documents. It might work with more, but it's a good number. I, the biggest actually problem of this part of this proof of concept was actually getting the documents prepared. So these documents contain um, data that I manually crafted to be relevant to that fictitious tail spin company to have a relevant chat. Uh, now that you have your data source, you need to somehow crawl it or index it. To index it, the first step would be to provision a so-called Azure Cognitive Search Service. I'm not going to do it right now. I already have it created. But, but when you choose to do it, make sure to select a standard uh, tier. It costs approximately 200 US dollars per month and you're charged per hour. So be careful with for how long you launch it or run it, but you can try it for a few hours and then delete it so that you're not charged. You might say it's not very convenient, but trust me, recreating it, it's very quick and I'll show you. Uh, once you have that service provisioned, this is the name I used, Clever Cognitive Search, but you can use your own. Once you have it provisioned, you need to create three components. The first and the most important one is a data source component. Um, SharePoint as a data source is still in preview, and you can only create it by sending an API request. I'm using Postman to send these requests, and I'll show you in a second how to do it. Uh, you cannot create this uh, using a uh, user interface. So, uh, Another component is an indexer. An indexer, uh, you can think of it as a uh, indexer, like indexing or crawler 
controlling job. Uh, something that actively goes over your SharePoint documents and saves it to your index. Index is where your um, index data is stored. Right? So um, to do it, I already have uh, these components created, but chances are you don't. Um, to have a quick start, you can find my gist on GitHub called Cognitive Search API SharePoint Data Source. In there, you have a quick manual on how to import it and which variables you need to uh, per set up. You also have two articles that you probably want to read first and, a, and an hour long tutorial if you are serious about implementing it. Once you um, once you install uh, Postman and import your collection, you'll have to go to variable section here and set up these variables. Each variable is explained in my gist, but uh, fairly quickly, I'll just go over them. So these two are related to cognitive search. These are related to the app registration. This app registration needs read-only access to your SharePoint documents. Uh, this is an Azure tenant. This is the same, same tenant where your SharePoint and cognitive search is. Uh, these are SharePoint site, SharePoint library URL, and custom columns. If your SharePoint library has custom columns, and I recommend you have them to have them, then you can also crawl them. And to crawl them, you need to specify them here. Then through the magic of uh, Postman, these variables will be used in sending three requests. The first request uh, is going to provision a SharePoint data source. I'm going to do it as a demo just to show you it works. Maybe not here. This is a demo, but here. Let's say I'm just going to provision a different name. You don't have to change it, but for the sake of a demo, I'm creating a SharePoint data, data source called demo sending a request uh, because data sources. Oh, OK, <laughs> let's create a new one like this. And literally in a second, you already have your data source here. So this is the one I just provisioned for you. And just like that, I can run two more queries to create an index. In this index, uh, you need to pay attention the first a bunch of fields are default. You don't have to change them. But the second portion is your custom fields. These are custom to you. You could set up whatever you prefer. If you have additional columns, add them here. Or if you don't use these, like annual costs and document owners, just delete them. And, and the last one is indexer. An indexer is something that crawls your SharePoint uh, documents and puts them in an index database. Don't need to change anything here. Just run it and you'll end up with an indexer like this. You can see how many documents it crawled. It's interesting why it's only 43, but uh, never mind that. And uh, once you have these three steps done, by the way, I could probably run them within less than a minute. This is why I'm suggesting for uh, a proof of concept deleting uh, the entire service when it's not used, you can get it up and running literally within a minute. Right. So once you have your cognitive search ready and it already crawled your uh, document libraries, which shouldn't take too long, I think it might take a, a minute or two, depending on how big your library is. So once you have that, you also need 
Azure OpenAI uh, service. If you don't have it yet, uh, you need to request it from Microsoft. You might get approved within 10 days. So maybe while you're watching it and you're thinking, why don't I get it? Get it now. You might get it uh, not today, but within a week or so. Um, it's not. It's free while it's not used, but once you deploy it, and deploy models. In this case, I'm using the latest GPT 3.5 Turbo model. Once you have that, you can uh, um, you can now deploy a website. So let's go to a website. First, let's go to a so-called playground. On the playground, you can pick your model you deploy here, GPT 3.5 Turbo. You can set a system message prompt. I'm, I advise you to update it so that the AI knows, the model knows who it, uh, what it needs to represent. For example, I'm suggesting uh, this. You are an AI assistant who works for Tailspin and answer, answers Tailspin employees' questions. Uh, in a well-formatted way with line breaks. The reason I added this because I had issues with AI opening, uh, replying with no line breaks. It was kind of strange, so I just had to put this prompt. I can ask uh, some basic questions like help me with onboarding, and you'll see that it'll... Um... Oh, okay. Um... It, I actually did not expect it to answer right away because the first step would be to connect to your corporate data. So right here, you can add a data source. And this is where the magic glue is. You have to select your Azure Cognitive Search. And then your AI will be context aware and it'll know which um, documents to crawl. So since I already done that, I can then deploy it using this button to a web application. When you select this button, you have to select a uh, an Azure subscription, an Azure resource group, and then wait for approximately up to 20 minutes for it to be provisioned. Yes, it takes time. And after that, you can finally chat with your bot that is uh, context aware. For example, I can ask questions like these. Where can I eat? Hopefully it'll answer that, fingers crossed. Okay, interesting. So it knows what is close to, to me. I, it also says I can do something for free. Uh, what is our public website? Oh, it answered quite quickly. I'm not going to go over all of these questions, but it, as you can see, it's context aware uh, thanks to the cognitive search connection to SharePoint. I can also go to chat history, go back, delete it, um, and so on. Start a new chat if I want to. OK, so that concludes my quick presentation. And uh, over to you, David. Mm -hmm.